Welcome everyone to Telvonica Telematics webinar. Today, uh, we're gonna host the webinar together with Blespi. Uh, so myself, Gediminas Mikalainis, uh, head of marketing at Telvonica Telematics and Sergey, uh, vice president of business development and Flespi, we'll be talking about how Teltonica Telematics devices for North America uh, complements each other and as well as being easily implemented with Flespi platform. So hello, Sergey. Hello, Gediminas. Hello, everybody. Yeah, so uh, probably I will not wait anymore and uh, go straight away to the content and what we are going to deliver to you today. Uh, before that, I would like to mention that you can have uh, ask you can ask questions right away in the chat. Uh, we'll be answering those uh, with our IoT engineer, which is uh, as well together with us today, Lohit. Hi, hello, Lohit. Hello, Gary Minas. Hello, everyone. So I'm Lohit. I'm the IoT solutions engineer for Canada Office. And free, feel free to ask your questions and we'll answer all, all of them. Yes, we will cover all your questions, all your concerns in the chat during the presentation at the end as well. We'll have a short Q&A session. So we can cover more questions if you have after the presentation. So welcome once again. Uh, I think it will take around 30, 45 minutes. So without further ado, let's go and uh, see what we have today. So for the agenda, we have uh, Teltonica Telematics, a little a short overview, uh, products and the use cases in North America. And as well, we have uh, Flespi, our partner, uh, which will be covering the API section. And at the end of the day, we will have uh, feel free to ask any question, Q&A session. So that uh, pretty much sums it up. And uh, I will tell you a little bit more our company, how we formed it, uh, where we are today, and how we are getting into the Canada and USA market. So first thing first, uh, how Teltonica is, uh, we consider ourselves as the top three in the world. And why we do that? It's uh, we are a vehicle telematics solution provider and always looking for ways to create value, reduce cost, and save time for our clients all over the world. So why we consider ourselves top, top three? So I think that pretty much sums it up. We have uh, offices all over the world. And since our creation in 1998, we have established, uh, we have sold to more than 170 countries all over the world and established offices in more than 20 countries. And with the experience what we are having, we are entering market by market, seeing and solving the problems over there. And currently, since the creation of Teltonica, we have uh, sold nearly and probably now more than 22 million devices worldwide. So significantly, uh, we're trying to divide our presence all over the world so we could cover all the regions. So you can see, in this, in, as in this map, we have uh, offices covered in every continent of course, except Antarctica, but we, we want and we try to be near and close to our partners. Moving further, uh, what is probably the most and exciting thing about Teltonica is that we covered it all. Design, production, supply, support. We deliver, deliver full portfolio of GPS trackers from vehicle tracking, asset tracking to personal tracking. Of course, some of the uh, tracking devices are not yet ready for North America, but we will be there. We will come in. First of all, we are starting with the vehicle telematics, and later on, we will cover the asset trackings, which is coming shortly, and as well, personal tracking. And one of our highlights I would like to mention is, uh, of course, production facilities with automated robotic lines to fulfill a production from A to Z. From component placement to PCB uh, to final boxing device and shipping to you. So we have 15 robotic lines, five FSMT lines, and can produce over 500 devices, 500,000 devices per month with 100% traceability. So we consider that as a really amazing achievement since we can control everything in one side. So that's short about little about our company, how we are delivering, how we are manufacturing, and let's go to the use cases and products in North America. So further on, uh, since now you're familiar with the company, uh, what we provide and what we are doing. So one of the most important things I would like to mention that we have the production development from A to Z. And as well, further on supporting you as a partner, we deliver the full 
scope of what we can give to you, right? So starting from configuration, SIM card, battery, cables, branding, packing. So we got it all for you uh, to save time after we delivered that. So you could just simply pick it up the device from the box, install it in your vehicle uh, and ready to go. So whatever comes to your mind, we can complement that with any additional services, entering the SIM card, customizing the configuration, or even do the customized software for you. Whenever the use case suits you better, you need some adjustions, just we got it all. So that saves time as well, helps to avoid errors, meet project deadlines, uh, keeps company reputation, I would say, right? So meeting the deadlines and uh, custom branding. So that's covers it all as after the customer sales. Moving further uh, about the security, which is really, really important, right? So also we have a various security options, various security options for every device, uh, fast way to configure. So different devices have its own security options, which, have, uh, which we have implemented uh, to prevent unauthorized access to the trackers, it is necessary to have that security measures for logging through all possible devices. So when login fails, the user is denied, access denied, and tracker remains safe. So we have covered it all. So you can check it as in this slide from the photo server, uh, app, mobile, computer, that's all locked on. And uh, moving further to devices, what we all came here. Also, feel free to ask questions in the in the chat, in the question section. So we are very welcome to answer those. Yes, one second. Moving further, uh, the, the probably the first and the, the one tracker I would like to mention is that uh, FMA, uh, FMM uh, 130A and FMC 138. So it's one of our first tracker in North America, which, which we have certified with PTCB, FCC, AT&T. And this device is ready to sell. So we have multiple new trackers that have been called specifically for Canada and US markets. And uh, first of all, they support uh, 4G LTE CAT1 for quicker data transfer and CAT M1. So this tracker is one of the most popular right now we have in our portfolio due to its three programmable inputs and another three outputs. They can be programmed to serve a digital or analog, depending on whatever you need to set on and off, such ignition, receive constant measurements on some values. So as well, this device supports scan data, reading even can control. So which allows the lock on lock the cars, such as for car sharing applications, right? So we'll take a look at that, those solutions in a little bit. And of course, this device supports Bluetooth beacons. So we have that covered as well in this presentation, how this device can be paired uh, with Bluetooth beacons and cover even more uh, use cases. So straight away to the first use case. By the way, any questions about this device, feel free to ask. Moving further with uh, first uh, use case, what we are delivering uh, and what we are willing to give you, how this device could be utilized in this particular use case. So we have a vehicle rental leasing. In this case of leasing, GPS vehicle tracker can improve driver safety, provide maintenance, of course, reminders, and include vehicle regulatory and maintenance obligations. So at the same time, in this use case, hiring FMC 130A and FMM 130A can help to prevent vehicle overuse late returns. For instance, owners, managers uh, set the vehicle mileage, for example, and limit uh, the drive that can prevent from excessive use. So this is one of the use cases we are currently distributing all over the world. And uh, my recommendation is go, go straight into it uh, with this uh, FMC 130A device. It's also to mention that uh, with the damages deal repairs related to customer misuse of vehicle before they have leave the country or city. So that's, uh, or, or leave to another state, for example, right? Moving to another use case, uh, which is becoming more and more, I don't know, probably it's through the roof. So in the United States alone, it's like 1.7 million packages are stolen per, stolen or missing from doorsteps per year. So it's like around, $9 billion a year. So it's uh, significant money, right? So there are quite a few scenarios. Driver can make his mistake, on, leave the car unattended, unlocked, for instance. So that's a lot of things can happen 
right? So this prevents uh, of stealing the car. For example, you can set up the immobilizer so makes the delivery van, the LAN, less appealing so you cannot steal that, right? So also this comes together in the additional adapter which you can use to set, out, set up those features. So prevent those cars to be stolen, save the goods, right? So that's basically about security of that. Uh, moving further, well, basically, it's uh, not only the for delivery services, basically for all the vehicles that can be used to protect those uh, for stolen goods with the whole bus or any other transport you can may think of. Moving further, agriculture, of course, agriculture. Why? Because it's probably one of the backbones of United States and, and, and Canada. And like the, the population is growing and the food of need is growing and the this is what we can deliver with our tracker in combination with can the, the can can adapter you can read the everything well basically everything from the uh, agricultural vehicle uh, so predictive maintenance of course increase vehicle lifetime uh, reduce maintenance cost make sure that the vehicle is operational ready and harvesting season comes right so that's uh, Another use case, which we see the big potential in the United States for uh, devices, for our devices, and as well for your business. So about this uh, FMC uh, uh, 130A and FMM 130A, these devices uh, currently covered up with uh, these top use cases, what I had mentioned. Uh, moving further, I have a OBD device, right? So in the OBD CAN category, you have prepared two more trackers. So these two trackers has 4G connectivity and as well LTE CAT and one connectivity. It allows having a rich CAN data. These device actually reads CAN data directly from the OBD. It's easy to switch from one vehicle to another, no need installation costs. It can be done in minutes, right? So these trackers supporting thousands of vehicles in United States, right? So we have your models for North America set up in these trackers and you can get data from the vehicle itself. So this is a perfect tracker for a wide use of applications, fleet management, light commercial vehicles, car rentals, leasing, driver logbook. So insurance as well, as well insurance telematics, which is through the, through the roof currently, not only in Europe, but as well popular among in uh, North America. So device as well supports Bluetooth Low Energy iBeacon. So you can also complement this device with uh, another uh, iBeacons around him. So moving further, we have another device, simple. So those devices, uh, fast and easy portfolio is equipped with CAT M1. Uh, and this device ensures the hustle-free installation as well as the previous one uh, with any other telephonic telematics track. So also has Bluetooth connectivity, wireless hustle-free installation, uh, accelerometer data, and as well certified with PTCRB, FCC, AT&T. So these are the OBD devices, what I have just covered. And moving further, where these devices can be used. So what I have already mentioned, so auto dealers, so manage the cars, simply move from one to another. So uh, it's easy to keep their vehicles in the proper technical condition and failure may cause financial losses. So weakening customer loyalty, right? So moving from one vehicle to another, it gives you the advantage of keeping the vehicle safe, give you the real-time fleet tracking, quick and easy installation, as well to get real uh, odometer, right? So one of the advantages to get the data from the vehicle gives you the ad advantage against your competitor to get that quicker, right? So be informed of discharging batteries for your convenience. It's possible to configure that GPS tracker can send notification when the battery reaches the certain level, right? So act quick, save time, and uh, be sure that the, the vehicle is saved, not uh, discharged, right? So this will help you as well to maintain your fleet ready, right? Your customer will be ready for the fleet for whenever it comes to it, right? Besides Seltonic and Telematics, GPS trackers have towing detection. So accelerometer can detect uh, car movement when its ignition is off. Thus, you can be sure that your fleet is 20 ho 24 hours safe. So basically, it's the, the security of the fleet that matters, right? And uh, another use case, what we have, it's the family car tracking, right? So not only the leasing 
the rental, but as well the family car. Sometimes these cars can, can be as well uh, given by the dealers with the particular rent or something like that. So any fleet manager or business owner, private drivers, families are interested to vehicle stats, location, tracking, and monitoring, willing to maintain them in the proper condition. So key family members and, and cars safe as much as possible. So they want to improve it awareness, accountability, avoid traffic accidents. So basically this is getting more and more popular and uh, family car tracking, it's uh, probably will be equal in, in the United States together with the leasing or rental, right? So what this can get you, it's the advanced route tracking, auditing, troubling, driving detections, accountability, awareness, security of force 24 seven and uh, maintenance and uh, vehicle health. So do it your way. Notifications can be sent. The data can be monitored via PC, laptop, tablet. So all the data is coming over there. And at the beginning, I mentioned that uh, these uh, trackers have a CAN adapters, right? So with these CAN adapters, it's designed to acquire data from light vehicles, uh, van trucks, buses. And uh, as well, we have another with uh, DTC, in addition to read diagnostic trouble codes, uh, and troubles and uh, all CAN 300. So we have two different uh, CAN adapters, which can read uh, for light vehicles, bus and trucks. For the heavy vehicles, we have all CAN 300 designed to read data from agriculture, construction, and special transport. So these devices uh, complement the ones I mentioned before and the use cases, uh, of course. Yeah, so moving further, uh, we have uh, this particular LVCAN 200 can read data from 1,500 different models of light vehicles, trucks, buses. It reads essential CAN parameters such as fuel level, odometer, VIN number, fuel consumption, uh, engine RPM, engine temperature, handbrake status. Uh, on the other hand, all CAN 300 is a professional solution. Uh, which companies are wishing to monitor canvas data from any kind of transport, right? So it supports more than 2,500 2, different models of light vehicles, trucks, buses, agriculture vehicles, transport. And uh, that helps That helps to reduce running costs, uh, improve driver safety, streamline uh, the maintenance process and support environment responsibility. So... On that part, uh, we pretty much uh, summed it up. Uh, as well, we have CAN control, which can uh, extend your use cases to another level. And here I'm speaking about the car sharing. So for the car sharing, we're using CAN control, which allows you to control the doors remotely, open, close windows, uh, as well, allows immobilizing the, the vehicle, how do you open it remotely, get the diagnostic codes, trouble codes. So this, it's pretty much for the car sharing, corporate car sharing, and uh, the adapter supports over 1,300 vehicles. So, and this number is constantly growing, right? So what I have mentioned before, it can do probably the same as I read the full level, VIN number, fuel consumption, RPM, engine temperature, and handbrake status allowing effectively identify whoever has opened the vehicle. So as I mentioned, car sharing is one of the top solutions over here and uh, as well, corporate car sharing. These are the top ones. Those devices uh, could extend the usage of uh, this device. Moving further, uh, we can connect uh, eye sensors. Eye beacons, one of our probably most uh, Last year, it was most anticipated device, and we got the award for this device. And uh, that's one of our, how to say, uh, biggest push-ups uh, together with uh, devices itself. So iBeacon can be used particularly for driver ID instead of one wire interface, saving installation time, also in possibility to monitor cargo tools, helps with theft prevention, and uh, battery up to 10 years. On the other hand, eye sensor can monitor temperature, humidity, which saves a lot of time since they are not in need of complicated one wiring and one wire technology. So eye sensor battery lasts up to five years. So both of those, both of these beacons are waterproof. So you can uh, mount it outside, inside, wherever you like. 
And uh, these two little things together with our trackers uh, can cover most of the scenarios, right? Where you need the uh, temperature tracking, driver identification, tracking goods, trailer tracking, waste container tracking, construction tool tracking. So whenever you need to put a little small thing on the unattended tool or asset you're using without internal uh, power source, you can use iBeacons together with these devices. So I hope that uh, you were able to catch all the information I had. Since uh, now my part is in here, I will give the word to Sergey and he will show you uh, how exactly our devices can be set up easily with Flespy platform. So we have our protocols, which requires quite some job to do, right? It requires some programming, some knowledge to do. Of course, we have all the tools, but with Flespy, you can do it in, I don't know, one hour. Sergey, you can do it in one hour. Seven Even less get a minute. Yeah, we'll, we'll be happy to cover that. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the floor is yours. So please do so, explain how that works. All right, thank you very much. Uh, okay, let me... Yeah, if you, yeah, there you go. I'll start sharing my screen. Okay, so I think my uh, sharing is enabled. Uh, so thank you, Gediminas, and uh, thank you, um, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, my name is Sergey Luchenko, and I'm a VP of Business Development for Flespy. Um, and I will introduce Flespy by actually illustrating uh, the challenge that we're solving. Uh, so you've heard all the wonderful things about Teltonica devices that Gediman has just shared with you. And uh, you want to go ahead and uh, start using them with your own telematics application. Uh, and then the challenge really becomes integration. How do you build a, um, a, re a reputable and uh, reliable process to get data uh, from the devices into your application? Um, so what's really behind this challenge? Uh, really a couple of things. Uh, first, the, de the devices work by uh, pushing data to the server using TCP or UDP. Uh, so on your solution side, you have to have a listener with ports uh, you know, open to be able to uh, you know, listen in and accept all the data and handle um, most likely lots of individual connections uh, depending on the scale of your solution. And then secondly, uh, to help you save the connectivity costs, what Tiltonica does is that they compress uh, the data packets uh, that the devices uh, send out into this binary strings of data. So it's, it's, they're pretty difficult to interpret. So you need a way to decipher and parse the data. Uh, of course, uh, like Gediman has noted, uh, you will be provided with the protocol documents uh, that will explain you the data structure and how to interact with the device. But there's actually quite a bit of work uh, involved uh, in getting uh, all of that done. Uh, so with Flespy, um, you essentially outsource the integration and uh, maintenance of that integration to us. Uh, Flespy is a SaaS um, a product. It's a telematics middleware that gets in between uh, the devices and your application. Uh, and uh, it, it, does, it does several things. So first, it's... Uh, uh, handles all this low-level communication between the devices and the server. So you don't have to worry about all those, you know, uh, TCP, UDP uh, ways of connecting. Um, and then secondly, we produce um, uh, data in the, in the JSON representation, those device messages, which is very easy to use and interpret. It's actually human readable, as you can see here. Um, and thirdly, uh, we provide the convenient APIs uh, for you to be able to consume this data into your application. Not only do we have APIs for uh, getting data, normalized data out of Flespy into, into your application, we actually also have ways of you controlling and, uh, uh, and, and changing configuration uh, of the device from your application uh, using our APIs. So let me now switch to my little demo here and uh, uh, show you a couple of things uh, right in, the, uh, in Flespy. Uh, so this is uh, how Flespy panel looks like. And I already have uh, three FMM uh, 00As OBD devices that get them in us covered, showed you uh, their capabilities a little earlier. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, click on um, uh, one of these uh, devices that had uh, most recent activities associated with them, and I go into logs and messages. 
So first of all, this is not meant to be a comprehensive demo at all. Uh, this is really kind of scratching the surface and helping you understand uh, some of the capabilities that FLSP has. There's certainly much more to what uh, beyond what I'm, I'm about to show you. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So uh, here, I'm um, in, inside this device, I'm in the logs and messages and a couple of things that you can observe here. First is the log of all the device activity, all the connects and disconnects, the information of this on TCP data sessions, uh, you know, what, what are the IP in, IPs involved, et cetera, et cetera. And down below are the actual normalized parsed messages uh, that, that we produce based on those binary strings, as I explained, that we receive from Tiltonica devices. So by clicking on any of them, uh, there's, uh, this panel opens up that um, allows you to uh, review and examine all the data points, all the parameters, uh, all parsed and normalized for you of everything the device carries. So, you know, you can see here the voltage information, current information, ignition. Um, I saw RPM at some point here, um, a real odometer, which is uh, quite, quite, uh, quite useful as, as Gideon has pointed out. So, you know, all, all this data is, is in front of you, very, very easy to read. Uh, from here, you can switch, in, switch into this JSON tab in this panel, and that's that JSON representation that I was talking about. This is exactly how that data is going to flow into your application. Uh, very easy to interpret for human and for, you know, JSON as format, which is handled, commonly handled in, 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 in all kinds of integration scenarios. Um, one other thing that I want to point out to here is this uh, 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 traffic button. So what that is, if you click there, that actually gets you to that lowest lowest level of communication between device and the server. So something that we take upon ourselves to deal with so that you can focus on your business logic on your application. So why is this helpful? The reason it's helpful is that, you know, quite you know, uh, once in a while, you will have situations that, uh, you know, there's certain device behavior that uh, uh, probably not what you expect. Maybe there are some situations that you need to uh, involve uh, Tiltonica support into. So if that's the case, what, what's what's important for you to have and to be able to provide is the raw data. You know, they, you'll be asked, you know, show show us, you know, what it is that is coming from the device so that we can assist you. So in Flespy, it's a very easy and convenient tool. You, you just go into this, we call it raw traffic viewer, and you can see all those binary packets. These are those binary packets that are actually coming from the device that is kind of difficult to decipher. Uh, it's very easy to export that data. And you can like ob observe the sequence of communication as far as their re data received and uh, Flespy sending the acknowledgement back to the device. Really what we try to abstract you away from, but it's also uh, good and, and a good thing that you have access to this tool for diagnostics and uh, um, troubleshooting purposes. Okay, I'll, I'm just gonna go um, back to the uh, original view. Another quick thing that I wanted to po point out on this panel is, uh, ability to very easily see where the vehicle is on the map. Um, I do want to say this is by no means designed to be a customer and customer facing application. This is just a set of tools that make it convenient to you as a TSP service provider, as a, as a developer to find your way around this data and, and, and deal with this data. Um, another quick thing that I want to point out to is this commands and settings. So think of command and settings as a uh, simplified uh, Tiltonica configurator, right? So you have, as you can see here, there's num numerous tabs, um, numerous settings that are organized by the, by the topic. So you can actually execute commands and change settings against the device right, right from uh, Flespy. Not only that, not only do you have access to this interface, you also keep in mind that every, every action, every, every command that is executable and can be sent uh, from here is also execu executable via API. We're an API-centric platform, so whatever tools we provide for the easy interaction, all those tools, um, all those capabilities and actions can be performed uh, executing by executing API calls that we that we uh, the API that we provide. Okay, so we've we've looked at the data. We like the data. The next uh, question becomes: How do we get that data into into? How do I get it into my application? So that's a very simple process. Actually, I'll show you one way. So if you go to stream and set up a new stream, and let's call it my first stream. 
And for the protocol ID, you'd select HTTP. Uh, here, you'd need to provide uh, the address of your endpoint. Uh, so the endpoint on, on your application side, they'd be able to accept uh, post request, uh, HTTP post request from us that would carry all that uh, normalized uh, data to your application. So I'll just kind of invent something, say my GPS solution.com. The new, there are numerous of other th settings that you can, that you can um, uh, change here. I'm not going to go into that. And then the next step is to assign, um, assign devices to the stream. So I have this three FMA 0A's and I'm just going to go ahead and, and sign them all. And I click save. And what that does is that creates that stream. So essentially now there's a link between um, Flespy and your application. And what's going to happen next is as the new data hits, uh, uh, hits uh, Flespy, um, Flespy devices from the actual physical devices out on the field, that data we're going to get normalized and then it's going to get passed to the stream that will continuously push data into your application. So it's a real time, close to real time data push. Um, and uh, you, you're going to be able to just accept that data push to you into, in, in that JSON uh, format that I, uh, that I noted. So that's, that's really as simple as that. Uh, switching back to my slides here. Uh, so in terms of API interaction, uh, so, some, some other methods or, or ways uh, uh, that, that I uh, want to share about. One is uh, REST API, where you, on your application side, actively make calls against Flespy and uh, request data from us, sort of this batch processing, and you control the frequency with which you get data from uh, Flespy into your application. Uh, it's all secured. We have this uh, highly secured way of uh, making these calls, the, uh, they all have to authorize with a Flespy token, 64 byte Flespy token. Uh, this is a push based method, uh, um, MQT API. So, MQT is becoming a very uh, popular way to uh, enable the data exchange and IoT telematics space. So, we, we've built a MQT infrastructure right into the Flespy platform. So, what happens as the data hits, uh, device data hits uh, Flespy? Uh, it gets normalized and then it gets published into our own MQT broker. And then uh, your application um, uh, would be able to, uh, would run a MQT subscriber client that would connect to the broker. And with that connection, we'd be pushing data to you real time. And then the final um, uh, uh, option is actually what I just demonstrated, that HTTP stream that I set up. Um, beyond that, uh, the, if uh, your solution uh, is hosted in a, in, in a third-party cloud, such as Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure or Amazon AWS, uh, we have specially built connectors for you to easily get data into those clouds as well. Um, and I will end with uh, the quick uh, note on the uh, quick start guide that we created uh, for Teltonica devices specifically. Uh, so there's this link here, which we'll share um, after the uh, after the webinar, uh, but it explains in a very uh, straightforward um, way uh, just the several steps that you need to take can, in can order to create this, your. Can, can you put this link into the chat, maybe for for all the people? Yeah, right? absolutely, can. I mean, that's a, that's a good idea. So, I'll do that in a minute. Uh, so, but that guide essentially, you know, takes you from uh, creating a free FlexP account, and by the way, with a free FlexP account, you have access to all the functionality, you're just limited by the number of devices you can actually create, it's 10. But with that, you can build a full, uh, full featured uh, a POC um, to connecting the device. And then from there, uh, experimenting with the REST API to extract that data. And that's, that's the thing I like about Flexby that you have uh, this free 10 devices, you can do whatever with them. So either you test the device, either you start using. So whenever you like to add more devices, then you have to pay but first 10 free you have all the features opened up and test is free so it's one of the best things i have heard in the market which a software provider can provide can give so that's yeah good stuff <laughs> yeah thanks uh thanks getting for the kind words yeah absolutely we're trying to make it really really kind of easy and uh remove all these obstacles from uh really trying the solution and getting familiar with that. So with that, that's really kind of ends my part. So I will uh, stop my sharing and uh, turn this over uh, uh, back to yeah. you, uh, Gideminas. 
thank you for joining the webinar. Uh, appreciate your time and uh, have a good rest of the day. Yeah, thank you, Gediminas. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, have a great, great day. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.